Hey guys, welcome to episode number 376. Today is Tuesday, so I have another tank tip for you. And before I share it, I did want to mention that I do have some sprouts in my 55 gallon chop and flip aquaponics system. Uh, if you might recall, a couple weeks ago I just tossed some seeds in there and uh, it looks like we've got some sprouts going. Um, so the tank tip for today is related to bell siphons. Uh, now you might have seen me construct this bell siphon and explain how it works with the notches in the side. Uh, and you might have seen the small fountain pump that I was using to pump the water from the bottom of the barrel up to the top of the barrel. And that small pump worked for a week or two, uh, but eventually it got plugged up and this tiny little plastic impeller uh, wasn't a match for the uh, back pressure that, uh, that water causes when you try to lift it up about three feet like this. So, what I wanted to discuss is what I did uh, to fix it, the challenges that I had when I did fix it, and how this whole system needs to be in balance um, and how difficult that actually is. So, uh, first part is the pump. Uh, like I said, this pump was a little bit underpowered and eventually what happened is it just died. It couldn't keep up um, and, and it, it, it crapped out. Uh, so what I did was I went ahead and bought a larger pump and I made a mistake of buying one that was a little too big. You can see it here. It's got a, um, a pre-filter sponge, which is always good. Uh, it has a larger diameter tubing that it accepts, uh, which is good. But what happened was it actually created um, too much flow. So the reason I got a larger pump is because a pump this size uh, doesn't have the head pressure to, uh, to constantly pump water up that high. But the challenge is when you upscale to a larger pump and it has more head pressure and it has more gallons per hour, you're putting more water per hour up through this grow bed. And one of the challenges that a lot of people have with bell siphons is if this water flow is really high and the bell siphon, when it's activated, can't siphon more water faster than the water that's being brought back up by the pump, what happens is this thing just sits here at almost empty all the time, 24 hours a day. And you might hear it sort of gurgle or suck air a little bit, but what happens is um, it sucks air and then it gets replenished and then it sucks air and then it gets replenished. And so there's always sort of a little bit of a trickle of water um, coming out of the other end of your siphon and the siphon never breaks and that's a problem because what will happen is this media will completely dry out because the water level will just sit down here 24 hours a day so um, the quick solution that I had to this problem is not the right answer but it's what I could do sort of in a pinch and what I did was the tubing that's down here which is the same diameter as this all I did was I took a knife and I sort of cut a couple holes in the side of that tubing what that did was basically acted as a bypass and as you can see there's a lot of flow going down here and uh, that's a lot of the excess pressure that's sort of bypassing this line which reduces the overall gallons per hour that are pumping up into the grow bed. So what that allowed me to do was successfully allow this bell siphon to break. Now if I wanted to do it the correct way, what I would do is probably install some sort of T-fitting down below and uh, have a little bit of a, of a valve there that I could fine tune and adjust so that the right amount of water is coming up through here and the right amount of water is bypassing back into the bottom chamber here and then that would be good. Um, even better is if I was able to select the right size pump that meets both requirements, um, it would be sort of the, the best case scenario. So what I mean by that is a pump that has the head height to pump water up this high, but 
which doesn't pump water so fast that it overwhelms the bell siphon. So that's sort of the conundrum that I feel like a lot of people dealing with aquaponics for the first time run into, and it's certainly something that I've just run into. So this was my quick solution to that problem. Again, it's not the right answer, um, but it's the one that's working for me at this moment. Um, the only other thing I'll mention is what a lot of people do is they start out with bell siphons, which are very simple like this. It's essentially a piece of PVC pipe with an end cap on the end and some teeth that are sort of cut into um, the bottom of that like this to allow your water to siphon up through. You see my stand pipe there and when this thing gets completely covered with water the siphon starts and uh, the bell siphon will go until it empties. Um, what a lot of people end up doing is when this stops working for them, like in the situation I'm in, a lot of people will take this bell siphon, they'll drill sort of an elbow into the side of it, and they'll stick basically a snorkel tube, in a way, down the side all the way to the bottom, or almost all the way to the bottom, and what that will do is it'll help to break that siphon um, as the water level gets all the way down, and uh, that will allow the water to more reliably um, raise up and then down and then up and down like a flood and drain bed should do. Um, so for now, this is where I'm at. Uh, hopefully me talking about this has helped you. Uh, if you're considering building a similar system, this is sort of um, you know the, the second step. And if this fails to work the way that I need it to, the third step is going to be to re-engineer the bell siphon and do it like most other people uh, end up doing it to make it as reliable as possible. I will certainly shoot a video on that uh, if it comes to it, but for right now, you can see that this water is dripping at a fairly slow rate. And I would say that the bell siphon can do twice that much water which seems to be a good uh, amount to aim for. Again, this is all just sort of off the top of my head. Um, it's not really um, like a measurement. I haven't measured how many gallons per hour are coming out of here or going through the siphon. It's just sort of, um, you know, what I see. And I guess the last little thing to mention is any water that's dripping on leaves like this isn't really gonna be good in the long term. Uh, so I might have to move this guy so that he doesn't get any sort of uh, leaf issues like mold or or whatnot. Um, obviously there are way too many plants in a very small space here. Uh, I just didn't know if they were going to uh, take off from their seeds or not. But luckily they have and so that's the start to my little chop and flip aquaponics bed. And yes, the crayfish is still down below there somewhere. Feed him every couple days. He's got his little PVC tube to hang out in. And uh, he hasn't complained so far. So anyways, guys, that's the little lesson that I learned today. Um, I hope if you are considering designing a system like this, that's a consideration you will take as well. And I'll see you guys later.